Hey everyone, Tomias here, and welcome to another AFK Journey video. So, Omis is finally here and in game the A ranked tank that is part of the Welder faction. Now, uh, taking a look at all of his skills in detail is what we're going to do in this video today. And of course, we can combine it with the in game animation from the official, uh, official video from the AFK Journey YouTube site. So, uh, without further ado, let's take a look because not only do we have all of the skills that have been revealed, we also have the seasonal, that's right, the seasonal skill as well, which is very important to see how meta uh, Omus is going to be. Now, starting off with the ultimate, we already know what it does. And if you take a look here, essentially, it's uh, got a passive component as well as an active component. And this is the ancient tenacity. You can see the other characters are essentially hitting uh, on this and he is able to use an aoe attack to basically stun everyone here now looking at the um, skill description i'll just read it to you guys the passive is that uh, when his hp drops below 30 percent for the first time okay um, he retreats to the back line and takes through. So that is the rooted aspect. And he is unaffected. And this ineffection, uh, unaffected part just means that uh, immune to all control effects and he's unable to move. And now his normal attack will turn into range and deals additional 50% damage to enemies surrounding the primary target. So it becomes an AoE splash. And we'll get to see it as well in the rooted part of that uh, YouTube video. Now the active we saw is basically attacking an enemy and knocking them down into the uh, into the air and then back down again. So this is 200% plus 20% of uh, the intelligence scaling or power scaling and plus extra 4% HP. So you can see that the scaling component of his um, his ultimate is not huge, but at least there's something. Okay, and honestly, I think this scaling portion is kind of weak. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 210 to 220 to 230. This is honestly whatever. But as you can see here that uh, in this, we've got the attack slamming uh, the um, units down. Now, looking at the other passives, which we have gone through as well in the previous video, the Verdant and Barriers. Now, this applies the barrier to the enemy, but we finally get to see how large the barrier is. This is 25% of almost his HP. And again, there's a tiny, tiny skill power scaling, right? And um, when a shield breaks, you do a explosive AOE damage to the surrounding enemies. And if you are rooted, this shield will then instead apply to the front line instead, the frontmost ally. So you can see this, it's not a small HP shield, it's pretty decent the shield so making him quite tanky but also when he's in the rooted mode making your frontliners very very tanky as well and the way of the forest this is the passive hp regen and when you read it in, in the back because you're not going to take a lot of damage you'll gain 30 30 energy instead plus basically four per second this is again um increase in stat as per skill point each point of the skill power gain now hero focus uh this is another passive just increasing the max hp and the prowling roots this is the uh extent uh the root extension to trap invulnerable uh, vulnerable enemies on the battlefield and when an enemy is knocked down and you know, knocked into the air um Almost will bind the target to the ground, increasing the knockdown duration and dealing 80% damage. And they can only be affected once every testing. So this is the uh, AOE um, disruption uh, to go hand in hand with any AOE CC you may have on your team already, right? It'll extend the duration by two seconds and also deals damage. You see all the upgrades will offer either more damage. It also gives life drain later on. So um, we talked about in the previous video, again, this prowling roots is going to be crucial in team making strategies. And the enhanced force, this is knocking back adjacent enemies by one tile when the uh, shield breaks or vanishes. I mean, honestly, we have to test this if this also displaces character and counts as a displacement. And uh, this offers this additional two second disruption plus damage from the enhanced force of the shield breaking maybe maybe this would be good and in terms of the season skill it's shooting a projectile at the target for every two seconds of your control effect lasting on the target so for every two seconds of crowd control duration or crowd control effect you will get to throw a projectile to the enemy so all in all okay all in all i think people were not that excited for the character 
And uh, again, the A rank character in Welder type. A lot of people are waiting for an S ranked Graveborn healer. That is the, basically the next meta unit to go for. And almost being a hybrid uh, hybrid main tank that goes into the back line as a sub tank. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. If you take a look at the animation and him in action, we'll just go back a bit. So this is uh, the ancient tenacity. And as we know, it's basically an AOE attack with disruption. You can see here and the verdant barrier. And this applies the shield and if he's rooted, the shield will go to the frontmost ally instead. And in Wave of the Forest is basically constant healing. You can see that uh, he is healing for about 5 to 6k every pop. Not bad at all. So he's got the tankiness. He's got the shield. That much is uh, a given. Now looking at the rooted aspect, they do show here as well. Um, so once he takes enough damage for the very first time, you can see dropping below half HP, then he will go boop in the back and affected heal for a bit and now we've entered the aoe rooted mode okay the damage coming out isn't anything to write home about in my honest opinion but you can see that uh, everything else does get enhanced this is the ultimate coming in and damn look at that crowd control not bad and of course giving the shield to the front line instead so uh overall i think a character that people i guess hoped we're going to be something else, but uh, this is what they got in the interim. And I think a lot of the players currently are essentially saving, right? They want to see the next big character in Grave War or whatever. And uh, currently this banner is just not that exciting. It's the same thing with Soren as well. And for all of these characters that you don't get, you can just add them to the wish list. You can add them to the Epic Recruitment or add them to these uh, regular wish lists. So there's no need to uh, go deep unless they are meta defining at release. So, uh, Overall, I'm going to be personally skipping and, like I said, plan for the next meta character. And you can see this banner is here for quite a while. 19, almost three weeks, essentially. So, uh, yeah, we got plenty of time to save. You can see how many pulls I have and how many gems I have. Look at this. Yeah, so I've got plenty of resources for the next character. Now, anyhow, let me know your thoughts. And it's Tamaz here. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye now.